Are we ready to hear from Pastor Jason Spears? Now, I have a little bit of trivia for you. I'm, I'm not sure, Jason, if you're aware of this, but Dubbo and Georgia actually have a little bit of a connection in a strange but weird way. So there's not many towns that can say, hey, we have giraffes in our backyard. I mean, that's pretty special for Dubbo that you have giraffes here. So, But I don't know if you know, but in Georgia, so if we were to give a gift to Jason of a giraffe, Jason, are you aware that you cannot tie your giraffe to a pole or lamp post in Georgia? So I'm sorry, but we better not give you a giraffe to take back. Is that okay? So there you go. There's a connection between Dubbo and Georgia. Can we please put our hands together again for Pastor Jason Spears? Can't touch this. Can't touch this. Where's Wesley Snipes? Where you at? Can't touch this. Where's Snipes? Where's Snipes at? He gone? No, 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 crank it up. My, my, my music hit me so hard, makes me say, oh my lord, thank you for blessing there you go. me. That was for Snipes. Hey, there you go, Snipes, what's up? Here we go, you ready? Let's go. Now, I'm out of breath. Now, that's terrible. That's terrible. All right. Just had to hammer. Just had to hammer real quick. Sometimes you got to hammer. Sometimes you got to do it. You got to drop the hammer. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm out of breath for real. Y'all thought I was kidding. I'm not. That's how out of shape I am. I'm already sweating, too. That's terrible. All right. Whoa. What'd you say? Who are you, Ben Staines? Is that what you said? How dare you? Oh, man. Ring the bell. I want to see this fight. He would mop the floor with you, bro. I'll tell you that right now. That's a grown man right there, son. That is a grown man. And a clean cut man, too. He looks good today. Yeah. Yeah. Libby's got a brand new man. <laughs> he looks so thinner and younger. It's great. Well, why don't we um, just lift our hands this morning and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the awesome, amazing opportunity we have to come together and hear powerful stories of what you're doing through amazing people like Levi and his wife. Lord, we pray that you would richly bless them. God, we pray that you would open doors for them that no man could ever open or close. God, I pray that you would open doors for them that would lead to a hallway full of more doors. I pray for every financial need to be met in their ministry. And we just pray your richest blessing on them. Lord, as we look at your word the next few moments, pray that you would illuminate some things. And help us to see a little differently. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Grab your seats. <clears throat> Three questions for you this morning. Bless you again. <laughs> Same guy. <clears throat> so I expect you to come to my elective and sneeze there and then tomorrow night when I'm on. Three questions for you this morning. Who was the first disciple? And who was the first disciple to understand that Jesus was the Messiah? And who was the first disciple to understand that Jesus came for the Gentile as well as the Jew? 
Hint, they're all the same person. It's all the same person. Now, keep, just keep your answer to yourself, and we'll come back in just a minute <clears throat> with that. Last year, when I was flying to Dubbo from Brisbane, I connected in Sydney. As, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. A lot of hatred for those city folk, eh? Love your neighbor as yourself. All right. <laughs> they weren't listening, bro. They weren't listening to a thing you said. Yeah. <laughs> From Brisbane to Sydney, it is it, like the wind. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're, we're coming in on an approach and, every, and, the, and the plane's doing this number. I fly all over the world all the time. That doesn't bother me. Except when you're coming in this way. That's a problem. And then you have to come back up like you don't land because you're coming in this way. And then you have to go back up and, and do it again. The wind was so bad, they shut the airport down. We were the last plane to land. You remember this? Last year. We had to get in touch with Pastor and say, hey, man, you know, because I, I was flying in on Friday night to speak uh, to a pastor's thing um, on Saturday morning, Saturday morning at 10. I'm like, well, I got to get there. They said, well, the airplane, the, you know, airport shut down for the night. You're the last plane in. No, no, nobody's able to come in or out. I'm like, I'm stuck in Sydney. Now, there's worse places to be stuck. You know, Wagga, I hear, is tough, is tough, that's a tough place to be. <laughs> that's tough. So, you know, I'm like, oh man, what am I going to do? So I'm just, I'm, I'm stuck there, you know, they're like, sir, we'll get you on the first flight out, 6 a.m., you'll get to Dubbo in time, no problem. I'm like, all right, great. So I'm in Sydney for the night. So I'm like, well, this is sweet. I've never been. I, you know, it was my first time in Australia, my first time to Sydney. I'm like, well, I'm not just going to sit around. So I check in the hotel, put all my stuff up, and I just hit the town. Now, when I, when I travel, I travel very comfortably. <laughs> Levi and I were on the same flight yesterday. We didn't know each other. But uh, I did see him look at me. I was like, who's this homeless man getting on this plane with me? And here he is looking like he stepped out of a magazine, right? And, you know, I got on this bus to go to the plane where we were coming to, and I'm like, God, that is just a good-looking man. And I want to punch him in the throat because he is such a pretty man. I hate him. And then we were introduced at the airport, and I was like, oh, man. Glad I didn't say anything. <laughs> so, um, so I travel very comfortably. I had on joggers. I had on a, a, a camouflage, a camouflage long sleeve t-shirt, a green military green flat bill snapback hat. These Converse, actually, they're slip-ons. No shoelaces, but to class it up a little bit, I had on these glasses. Okay. So I'm walking around Sydney and I'm like, ah, sunset, you know, there's the Harbor Bridge and then there's the Opera House and it's just beautiful, man. It's beautiful. And you're just watching going, oh man, this is great. I'm, you know, I'm just chilling by myself. I have a night in Sydney and I'm like, okay. Uh, well, let's see. I bet there's something playing. It's Friday night. I wonder if something's playing at the opera house. So I waltz on up there and I go, hey, is there anything playing tonight? And, and the lady at the box office goes, yes, uh, the Sydney Symphony Orchestra is on. And uh, they're, they're playing two pieces, Beethoven centered around the piano, and then some Bruckner pieces. And I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. I said, do you have any, uh, do you have any tickets left? And she goes, for you? 
Uh, yeah. Is that, a, is that a problem? Oh, well, let me check, sir. She goes, we have two left. They're both single seats. One is in the nosebleed section, way up in the top. Or there's a box seat right here. And I'm like, box seat, done. I don't care how much it costs. And then she told me how much it cost. And I said, well, I guess I'll eat at Subway tonight. Okay. So, so, I, so I get the ticket and I'm like, yes. I'm in joggers. These Converse, a long sleeve camouflage t-shirt, a military green flat bill snapback hat, and these glasses. And I walk in there like I own the joint. There's people in there that have on tuxedos and, and full length gowns and sequins and scarves and wine and everybody's closing business deals and then there's me, right? So I come down and sit in my box seat and I'm, I'm, I'm full on tourist, right? So I'm taking pictures and I'm like, what is amazing? And, and so I'm just kind of sitting there wide eyed, right? Like I'm from the country, you know, you can, you can take, you can, <laughs> you, 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 yes, yeah, you know, you know, you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take that country out the boy now. So I'm just sitting there like, what is happening in here? This is amazing. Well, all of a sudden, here comes uh, this, this uh, sharply dressed couple, uh, and they sit down next to me. He has, uh, she's, she's a little frumpy, um, but, but he has, no, I'm not being mean. I just want you to know and, and kind of see who is, is sitting next to me. He, he has this, this bright white uh, feathered hair and this perfectly white manicured beard. He looked like Michael McDonald. You know who Michael McDonald is from the Doobie Brothers? You don't know Michael McDonald's? Come on, some of you older people know. So y'all ain't been saved all that long. Come on now, y'all know. You ain't that saved. You know Michael McDonald. Like, hur, hur. that's kind of what he is. Her nose topping us now. You know, that's, that's who Michael McDonald is. He's great. So... <laughs> So I'm sitting next to Michael McDonald. And then in comes this French couple who, you know, he has on his scarf thrown around and his nose in the air. And they both just smell like a chimney. And they've been smoking two packs of cigarettes in 15 minutes, right? And they just come in and they're just all French and baguettes and, you know, all this stuff. So... So then there's these, these, these amazing people who clearly are wealthy. And then there's me, right in the middle of them, right? So I am just enthralled at the whole thing. Has anybody ever been to the Sydney's, to the, to the Opera House? You've been to the Opera House? Have you heard anything in there? Like the, it's, it's stunning, stunning. Well, this lady comes out in this full length uh, emerald green satin dress to a rousing applause. She's in her mid-60s. She sits down at the piano, uh, and, and, and the piano is front and center. There's an ensemble behind her. The conductor then comes out, and this lady just, you know, is ready to go. And then, let me tell y'all, when I say this woman played the piano, this woman played the piano like nobody I've ever heard in my life. Now, um... They tell you there's no video that can be taken <laughs> during the... But they said nothing about audio. So this is what I was listening to. I mean, that was her. I mean, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm blown away. She did that for 40 minutes. Never missed it. No, it's still going on. Hold on. I thought I turned it off. 
<laughs> Listen, I've never heard anything like that in my life. 40 minutes. Now, as she went about 25 minutes in, I'm on the edge of my seat watching this. I am in the zone. I'm feeling everything. I am picking up what she's putting down, okay? <laughs> and I mean, you could see, like you could hear, this is how clear it is in there. You could hear her heel hit the wood on the stage and then her, her, her shoe hit the pedal. I mean, it, it, I mean, you could hear it all. Boom, you could see the arthritis built up in her hands. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I'm just blown, I'm sucked in, right? About 25 minutes in, she does this. Now, where I come from, when there's a break in the action like that, <laughs> much like when Levi got through with each song, what did we do? Right. Yeah. Here's what your boy did. I went, woo -hoo -hoo! yeah, woo! I'm standing up in the box seat. 3,000 people sucked the air out of the opera house and everybody did this. And then here I am going. The ensemble, everybody stopped. She's playing and And I'm like, my bad. And I sat back down. Michael McDonald leans over and goes, first time of the opera mate. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You could have warned me about that. <laughs> she, finally, after everybody gained their composure, regain their composure. I mean, she shredded it, man. And finally at the end, you know, her, you know the last one, it's like everybody knew what she was playing, except for me. <laughs> and he goes, you can clap now, mate. Okay, all right, woo, yes. Everybody stood up and went crazy. Went crazy. It was unbelievable. I've never, I've never seen anybody to, with, with that level of skill just wearing it out. It was overwhelming for me. Eric Clapping, she comes up, does the whole, yes, clap for them. Yes, but I know you're really clapping for me, but I have to do this. It's in my contract. Please. Then she does this and her and the conductor, they walk off. They just keep clapping. They get louder. She comes back out, as you do. No, no, please, just no, for them, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, and off they go again. They did that four times. They wouldn't let her leave. By this time, I have tears coming down my face. Because I'm looking at this, I'm like, these people are so appreciative. So I'm, I'm thinking with every time she comes back out, how long did it take her to master her craft to that level of precision and perfection? How long did it take her to learn that piece, to perform it to that level? And so I'm just moved by everybody's appreciation for what she did. Four times come back. So I'm crying and I just look over at, at old Michael McDonald here and I'm like, oh man, well, he's crying. I'm like, oh. I was like, hey, you're crying. <laughs> he said, you're crying. Why are you crying? I, and I just told him exactly what I told him. I said, how long did it take her to do that? I said, I got to tell you, that was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. I was so moved and I'm just, I, it was just overwhelming. I said, well, why are you crying? He goes, oh, she's our best friend. And we flew in from London to be here tonight because this is her very last performance. 
I was like, what? I'm like, and I'm not even supposed to be here. And he goes, you ain't kidding. <laughs> Ow. He said, uh, I said, please, if you get a, you know, if you talk to her, please tell her. I said that, you know, the youngest guy in the room by 47 years <laughs> just loved every second of that. And, and he said, oh, I'll tell her. And he goes, well, and so we start talking. Then he goes, do you work with the soul? I've been asked a lot of questions in my life, but never that one. He says, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a minister, and I said, I'm also a business coach and everything. And I said, so in fact, I guess I do work with the soul. I said, why do you ask? He goes, well, most people who listen to this and who were as engaged as, as you were, he says, I, I was just watching you um, during the whole thing and just appreciating. He goes, uh, you, you, you're deeply moved. Like, this music doesn't move everybody. Right? And he says, but so I just figured you must have, you know, been a therapist or something. Or, uh, you know, whatever. I was like, yeah. So we were talking about life and stuff like that. And he goes, well, um, you know, she's done in a few minutes. We're going to dinner. And I was like. <laughs> and then it was almost like he snapped out of our connection and went. I'll tell her you said that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, it was so close. If I'd have just changed clothes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, have you ever been to a grade three Christmas musical? <laughs> Nothing like the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. This sounds like they're murdering animals at the zoo, right? You're just like, somebody's killing something. Something is dying. The kids, they try hard. You love them. Grandparents are, 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 are get their iPads up. All you see is like, you know, everybody's taking pictures and video. And, and all the kids, you know, you know how they're up there. They're like, hey, hey, dad, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, it, it, you love them. <laughs> you love them. But it's, but, it's, but it's nothing that you wouldn't go to. Nothing you would go to if it wasn't your kid, right? Let's just be honest, okay? That's not being mean. That's just being honest. That's being AA honest, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> But they're great, right? And it's good. And then they're, they're done. You clap. You're like, yes. Because you got to start somewhere, right? You got to start somewhere. So you encourage your kids in that. And it's wonderful. Well, there was this one where uh, at the end of the program, they, uh, the school had invited the special needs class to come. And uh, people were helping wheel the children all, all up. And they were lined up across the front. Most of them were in wheelchairs. Many of them uh, were nonverbal, very low functioning. Uh, a lot of them were drawn up. They had cerebral palsy. And uh, so there was a few that were on walkers, you know. And they're all lined up in the front. And each of them were given a bell. And each bell had a different note. It was representative of a different note. And so in some of these kids' hands, they were drawn in like that, and they slide the bell right in here. So they're all lined up. All the kids get their bell, and then the sweet conductor stands at the front and then points to each child for their turn. And they would wait until each kid played their note. And it would take a few minutes. But I'm telling you, it was one of the most beautiful things. It was the best version of Silent Night you'd ever want to hear. But it took about 10 minutes. And at the end of it, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. And when they were finally done, much like the professional pianist, for the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. 
um, they got a rousing standing ovation for the equal time of about 10 minutes. It was one of the most moving things you'd ever want to see. Now, how do those two things tie in with who's the first disciple? Who's the first disciple to understand that, that, that understand Jesus was, was the Messiah? And who's the first disciple to understand that Jesus came for the Gentiles as well as the Jew? At, having thought about that, what would your answer be? Peter, right? That's what we all think. That's what we all assume. That Peter was the first disciple because Jesus sees some of Peter and says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. He drops his nets and he goes, right? Jesus, oh, uh, well, who do men say that I am? Oh, Peter. Oh, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But interesting in John chapter 1, verse 40, the Bible says this. It was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John the Baptist had said and who had followed Jesus. After an encounter with Jesus, after hearing John the Baptist, so, so basically John and Andrew were disciples of John the Baptist. John the Baptist said, hey, that's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so Andrew goes, yeah, I think I'm going to follow him now. And he does. Watch this. Verse 41. The first thing that Andrew did was find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. How about that? Uh, also, I believe it's John chapter 10 or John chapter 12 where uh, Philip comes to Andrew and says, hey, these Greeks want to see Jesus. What are we going to do? Andrew says, follow me. And he takes him to Jesus and says, hey, these Greeks want to see you. I just figured I'd make the introduction. You guys have at it. It was Andrew, right? Why do we always think it's Simon Peter? <laughs> Loud mouth, right? But there's always something that, that we think about somebody who is the loud mouth. We always think that God is the one who uses the extroverts. We always think that it's God who uses the one with the microphone. We always think it's God who uses somebody with the guitar who can write songs in such stellar ways and communicate such truth. But, but many times what we fail to remember is that although these you know, platform gifts are amazing, it's the Andrews of the world who actually changed the world. Five thousand people are starving. Who, who grabs that little boy's lunch? Andrew. Everybody's looking around, freaking out. How are we going to feed all these people? I don't know. Andrew goes, hmm. He's very resourceful. Hey, man, let me borrow this real quick. All right. Here you go, Jesus. It's not a lot, but I've watched you do a lot of things. Maybe you can do something with this. Where was Simon Peter and all that? Right? See, sometimes we think that it's, it's this up here that's what makes ministry. But it's the Andrews, the behind the scenes, the people who are willing to serve, the people who are willing to just bring people to, who like, yeah, I'm going to follow Jesus and the first thing I'm going to do is go introduce my brother to him. But see, Andrew, the first, like if you're reading the book of John for the very first time, you're like, okay, oh, I'm introduced to Andrew. And, but he's known by who his brother is. His identity to, to John was wrapped up in, because you don't even know who Simon Peter is. <laughs> like, if, like if you're reading it, you're like, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Well, who's Simon Peter? Right? So why is it that we put so much emphasis on the loud mouths, on the extroverts, when, when God has so much for the introvert. There's so much ministry for people who feel like I'm not gifted enough. 
I'm not talented enough. I don't have the right gift. I can't do what Pastor Ben does. I can't do what Levi does. Well, good, because God didn't call you to be them. God called you to be you, right? You don't need to be more. You just need to be more you. That's the thing. And listen, no matter if you are a classical, professionally trained pianist or whether you're a special needs child balled up in a wheelchair, God's given every single person a note to play. And all you've got to do is find it. And when he stands and calls on you, no matter how long it might take you, you just play it. Right? Listen, there was a lady um, I met in North Queensland. She, uh, she was in ministry at her church. She met a man and fell in love. Um, and and um, while they were just kind of hanging out and friends, he had told her that because of his previous lifestyle, he had contracted HIV and he had AIDS. And uh, he said, I'm just telling you up front, you're my friend, but I kind of like you. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to be, um, you know, connected with me. They met, fell in love, and, 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 you know, the relationship continued. And she said, I love you. And they got married. Two years later, he died. And she was so heartbroken. She knew what was coming. It was a, it was a long, drawn-out illness. And uh, her pastor was taking a trip to the Philippines. And... She said, I just need to go. I need to go. She got on the plane, and their first stop was an orphanage that housed children and babies whose parents had either died from HIV and AIDS or they had HIV themselves. It's an orphanage to take care of AIDS babies. And she picked up one of those babies and held it in her arms and she stayed there for 10 years. Now, uh, since then, uh, she met a man and they got married and now they pastor a church in North Queensland together. See, it doesn't matter. Like, you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not like the pastor and everything. No, 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 no. You might be one day, but, but the reality is you can play your note wherever that is. And, and, and for her, uh, the, like holding AIDS babies, many of them dying in her arms, she wanted to make sure that every single person was loved because when her husband was dying, his family had ostracized him. And she was the only one by his deathbed. And she said, I'll never, as long as it depends on me, I'll never let anybody with AIDS die alone. And then she held babies as they died. Never letting anybody die alone. Well, then now they're pastoring a church in North Queensland, Australia. Listen, whatever it is right now in your life, what is it that that you really have a passion for? What is it you feel like God's called you to? You're like, oh man, Jason, I'm just a greeter at the church. Oh, just? Just? You set the tone for everybody walking into the building and the experience that they're going to encounter. Do you know how many churches I've been to in my life where the greeter has ruined the whole day? <laughs> oh my word! A greeter, like, greeters send people to hell more than anybody <laughs> on the planet. 
I'm kidding. Not really. But uh, yeah, no. I'm just being AA honest right now, okay? It's spot on, yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, seriously, think about it. Oh, I'm just a greeter. No, no, no. You're Andrew. You're Andrew. Oh, no, I just serve on the hospitality team. Like, no, 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 no. Just? You're creating a safe space where people can come in and know that they're going to be loved and cared for before they even walk. Oh, you know what? I just work in the nursery and change diapers and hold babies. No, 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 friend. You know what you do? You are loving a child, number one, and you're providing an opportunity for their parents to sit in a service and who knows what might happen in their life that day. Oh, I'm just doing this. No, no, no. You're not just doing that. You're saving the preacher too from a screaming baby all day, right? Now, I would never say this anywhere else. <laughs> but at my church, when I was still pastor, there was this lady who just kept her screaming baby. I mean, the baby was six months old, screaming like somebody was just, just ripping its skin off or something. I don't know. It, it was just, the baby was, he was screaming. And I'm like, and the Lord said... And finally, I just said this. I said, hey, listen, I speak baby, and he's saying, get me the heck out of here. That's what he's saying. <laughs> so I would never say that anywhere else. I did to my people, though. Oh, but I'm just a nurse. You're not just anything. You're Andrew. And, and, and one day, like on the day of Pentecost... When, when Simon Peter like stood up and preached about an 18 verse message and 3,000 people said yes to following Jesus I'm sure Andrew was there in the crowd somewhere not going should be me up there but he was probably remembering the first day that he introduced his brother to Jesus and I'm sure he's sitting there going that's my brother yeah friend so, no matter if you feel like a classical, professional concert pianist for the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, or whether you feel like I'm just, I, I'm, I'm in a wheelchair, whether you're that person, or whether you're a special needs child, everybody's got a note to play. And I just came a long way to encourage you to play your note. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. God, I pray right now for those of us in this room who have been feeling insignificant. Like, my gift doesn't matter. I'm just this. I'm just that you're not just anything but you carry the spirit of Andrew that's helping lead people to a revelation and relationship with Jesus so Lord I pray your richest blessing on your people today and, and remind us today that no matter what our note sounds like whether we're one of the end of the spectrum or somewhere in between. May we all play our note in Jesus' name. Amen. May the blessings of the Lord be on you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he turn towards you, give you his peace. Grace and peace. Thank you, Pastor Jason. Let's just remember to remove the just. We're not just. God's called us for more. Amen.